I would like to share a few of my thoughts and experiences of Dede Kosa. And you know when you remember some people, you remember what they've said. But when I remember Dede Kosa, I don't remember so much things she said or even our conversations, probably the greatest impact on me was her presence, her incredible vibrations and her profound spirituality. She was just like the living form of spirituality in front of you. Even if she didn't say anything, somehow the whole aura and atmosphere of her presence was quite profound. And some years ago, I attended the World Conference on Religions and the World Parliament of Religions. And there was one speaker there who spoke about three things. He said there are three things, information, knowledge, and wisdom. And he said that there's so much information in our world, you can Google and you get billions of results. Knowledge, he said, is, you know, philosophy and beliefs and ideas and so on, which have been written about throughout the centuries by the saints and the scholars, sort of for the intellect. But he said wisdom was when you become the embodiment of knowledge, you become the form of knowledge. Your life is just a, an example of that. And really, I would say, that this was Dadi Koza. Her life was the message. And, you know, I spent a lot of time with her in different places and even traveling with her. And what I really felt was the seed of her specialty was her purity. She had such a natural purity, I would say, that just radiated from her being. And to me, purity is a state of being when all aspects of my life are based on truth. And to me, in a way, Daddy Gozar, just her, her whole being was embedded in truth. And then that just emerged out of her in this sort of this incredible vibration, she just created an atmosphere wherever she went. Now, she was an extraordinary teacher and speaker as well, but it was the power of the vibrations behind the words that really had a lot of impact on me. And, you know, this power of purity was really just her amazing strength that she spread and I remember once she was saying that one of her favorite topics that she would speak about was ruling power and controlling power. And she would say that she considered herself a self-sovereign, I the soul and the master in my inner world. And what that means is I'm the master of my mind, my thoughts, my intellect, my feelings, my attitude my behavior, my actions. I'm the authority. And she went on to say that she's very careful, like disciplined, to control and rule what her mind thinks about. And she said she kept within the parameters of certain thinking and she didn't allow her mind to stray out of you know, thinking about spiritual knowledge, practicing soul consciousness, in other words, going deeper and deeper into being really, truly living as a soul, remembering God or remembering Baba, as we would say, seeing virtues in others. She would really become the example of all of those things. And so when you saw her, she was very simple and very sweet, but internally she had that complete sense of ruling power and controlling power, she kept this truth in the heart of her being and it was never contaminated by falsehood. And so that's why this wonderful sense of purity was just exuding from her being. 
And I was a part, or I am a part, of a group called the Regional Coordinators who represent the different regions of the world because the Brahma Kumaris have centers all over the world. And many times, Daddy Kulzar would join our meetings. And you know, she was so silent. She was so humble. She'd just come and sit there so silently and humbly. And sometimes I got the feeling she was beyond. You know, she was just like in another world. <laughs> and yet, when she was invited to speak, and she would only speak if she was invited because she was so royal, she was so astute. She'd listen to everything. And she always gave such a deep answer that was really so deeply spiritual and once again really influenced my truth. And it really taught me how you can be so close to God and yet so connected with the reality of life. Because sometimes I feel I can remember God and then I'm not so attentive or responsible to things happening around. Or on the other hand, I get so caught up in what's happening around me, I forget God. But Daddy Gulzar had this perfect balance. And I think I can say when I was around her, I would often think that I'm experiencing an egoless human being. What does it mean to be egoless? It was like she was in this world, but was absolutely humble. And that was so attractive. People were so attracted to her. And yet, whenever I heard her speak, and I, I heard people praise her, give her gifts, and really she was so humble and so polite to everybody, but all the time there was one mantra she kept saying, you know, it's Baba, it's Baba, it's God, it's God. She never accepted praise for herself. She really, it wasn't just lip service, oh, it's God, it's God. She really, really felt she's just God's instrument. I'm just God's instrument. I have no ego of my own. And I remember once Didi Manmohini, who was the head of the Brahma Kumaris after Brahma Baba passed away in 1969, and she was that until 1983 with Daddy Prakashmani. And she said, what's the difference really between great souls and the greatest souls? In other words, you know, a lot of the great teachers and scholars and saints and sages and the greatest. She said, some are such spiritual people and great teachers, everyone praises them, but they accept them. But the great, they accept that praise, but the greatest spiritual people are the ones who serve and give and people praise them but they, in their heart, they don't accept that praise. They know that it's God's praise. And that humility, I think, was Daddy Gozar all over. And it was just such a lovely atmosphere. And this egoless came through as an innocence. It was amazing how sometimes you felt you're in front of a small child, like a little child, and yet she'd open her mouth and she was like the wisest of the wise. And it was this lovely balance, once again, of this incredible innocence, but this great wisdom at the same time. But one of the things I loved about her was her incredibly benevolent feelings for all. She could see everything. She was so wise, and yet she chose just to have benevolent feelings and she had a lot of personal disciplines. I remember she once told me once, wherever I go, I never repeat the defects of the place I've just been or the people I've been with. She will never speak badly. No one ever heard her say anything bad about anybody. And she said that's a form of royalty. But even though she was so spiritually elevated, so pure, so humble, with all that greatness, she was so simple. It was so simple. Just, I think, simple thinking, simple speaking, simple actions. She was the embodiment of a, a simplicity. And because of all these virtues, you know, when you're in front of her, she just there was a natural feeling of love because she was such a pure and elevated soul. 
And just me sharing these thoughts, um, I'm remembering her at the moment and just having all these beautiful feelings that I had when I was in front of Daddy Gulza, who is just such a living example of one who was the embodiment of purity and spirituality and humility.